Hi Church, welcome once again to another session of our regular Chew on the Word. I'm going to share with you today an exhortation which I called Uncharted Waters. Because as we now face the sixth or seventh week of our lockdown, I noticed that many countries, they are already thinking of how to ease the lockdown including Spain and uh, Germany. In other words, as I look at the curve, it is flattening and the end is coming soon. Even in Malaysia, I feel that the government is thinking now of how to ease the lockdown. But the question for you and for me is, what's going to happen to us? How are we to navigate post-MCO as we step into uncharted territories? I want to share with you today a passage from Joshua chapter 3 because here it gives us some steps of how you and I are going to navigate through uncharted waters. Let me read. Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then, it's very important, the key verse is verse 4. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Uncharted waters. Keep a distance of about a thousand yards or two thousand cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Then Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Verse 13, let me jump. As soon as the priests who carried the ark of the Lord set foot in the Jordan, the water following, flowing downstream would be cut off and stand up in a heap. And so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carried the ark, went ahead of them, and the Jordan was in its full flood. And yet, as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan, their feet touched the water, the water from upstream stopped flowing and piled up in a heap at a great distance in a place called Adam. And in verse 17, the priest who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground right in the middle of the Jordan while the entire nation of Israel crossed over. You know, this is the first social distancing in mankind history. 1,500 years ago, the Lord says, don't come near me, eh? stay away. 2,000 cubits. First social distancing ever mentioned in the Bible. But more important than that, the key is in verse 4. Then, you will know which way to go since you've never been this way before. In other words, God is saying, if you do this, follow these steps, wow, you will know which way to go. Why? Because you're going into uncharted waters. So what are the steps that you and I must take as we now prepare ourselves for the challenges that lie ahead of us? Four steps. Firstly, consecrate. That's what he said. That's what he said, verse 5. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. Why? Because tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. So can I challenge you? Can I encourage you, friends? First thing we need to do as we prepare ourselves to navigate through uncharted waters, consecrate. 
KGV says sanctified, NLT says purified, kadosh, in other words, set ourselves apart. And I know we have been doing that during this lockdown. Continue to do that. Don't let the busyness of the day and all the things crowd Jesus and God out of our lives. No, set ourselves apart unto God. If we do that, I want to believe that the Lord will then tell us, show to us what to do and how to go about navigating through uncharted waters. You know, the favourite verse that we all quote in Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Do you know that that Psalm, Psalm 46 verse 10, was made by the psalmist in the, in the midst of turmoil? What? I thought it was by the riverside or by the side of the pond or by the pastures. No, read. Preceding verses. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall, verse 6. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease on the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear, burns the shields with fire. That's verse 9. And then he says, be still and know that I am God. In other words, in the midst of turmoil, uncertainty, uncharted waters, be still, consecrate, tenang, tenang, hear from God. And then he will navigate us through uncharted waters. The second thing we need to do, going back to Joshua 3, not only must we consecrate ourselves, but we must be confident. That's what they did. You see, the priests had to keep on walking as they carried the Ark of the Covenant. The, the, the waters of Jordan were its highest. It was flood waters. And yet, as the priest touched the edge of the water with their foot, the water stopped. No, it didn't. Because the waters were dammed up a great distance away, upstream in a place called Adam. So as the priest began to walk, touch their feet on the water, hey God, what's happening? The waters are still raging, but they had to move forward. Why? Because God said so. They had been confident and trusting God. And they kept walking, walking, walking right to the middle of the water. Yet the flood waters were still coming and coming and raging. But they were confident, you see, that God who led them into the water will also lead them out of it. I want to say the same to you, my friend. The God who led us through all of this, we don't understand, we don't have to understand. Surely, we must be confident that He will lead us out of it into uncharted territories. Do you know that the, one of the founders of SIB, Hudson Southwell, one of the three founders, Hudson Southwell, Kerry Tolley, Frank Davidson, Hudson Southwell wrote his autobiography on the founding of SIB in 1928. And he named and titled his autobiography, Uncharted Waters. Do you not think that he was afraid? Do you not think that he was scared? Hate hunters, malaria, dysentery, unforgivable terrain, the heat of the, of the tropical sun. And yet, Hudson Southwell went forward why? Because he was so confident that God who led him into the wilds of Borneo will not only see him through, but see him through triumphantly. And today, SIB is a force to be reckoned with. After 92 years, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved because Hudson Southwell, the founder, was confident of the promise of God. So I say the same to you. As we enter into uncharted waters, let's consecrate and let's be confident that the God who leads us into the waters will also see us through. The third thing, cross over. 
cross over. Yes, the word cross over or crossing occurred 13 times. In other words, the whole exercise is for you and I now to not only go into the water, not be drowned. No, we want to cross over into new territories with God into so-called promised land. That's what it says here. The promise of God is this. Consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, verse 5, the Lord will do amazing things among you. God will do a miracle for your business. He will do a miracle for your career. Many of you are worried about your career, your jobs, the uncertainty of your cash flow. Cross over. Cross over because God is there with you. I told you about social distancing, right? They had to keep themselves 2,000 cubits away. And after consecrating, the Lord was not only there with them, the Lord was there right in the middle of the river. So now, the Lord was in their midst. And even as the Lord went ahead of them, and now in their midst, as they crossed over, where was the ark? Absolutely right, behind them. So the Lord was ahead of them. The Lord was right in the middle of them, in the middle of the river. And the Lord was also behind them. And this is a promise of God, even as we cross over into uncharted territories. Because God promised us in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 6, Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. And your righteousness will go before you. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord will be your real God. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and the Lord will say, Here I am. We can cross over on dry ground, friends. Cross over. Let's take a step of faith because God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So what do we do as we prepare ourselves into uncharted waters? Number one, consecrate. Prepare yourself. The now, listen, hear, separate yourselves unto the Lord. Number two, be very confident that the Lord will be with you. And then move, cross over. And here's the fourth step. The fourth step is very, very important. I can't get a proper C for it. But it's amazing as I read chapter 4 of Joshua chapter 3. Once they have crossed over, what did the Lord ask them to do? A very strange thing. Set up a memorial. And I call this, remember, you are in covenant with God. What does the 12 stones, not 1, not 2, but 12? Because 12 is the number of tribes. 12 is the number of government. God told the children of Israel, set up a memorial of 12 stones. Why? Because God wants them to remember every time you look at the 12 stones. That's what he said. You remember that I am in covenant with you. And you tell that to your children for generations to come. Is God sentimental? Is God forgetful? No, we are forgetful. So the first step is this. Remember. Remember, remember, always remember. Even when you go to uncharted territories, doubts will come in, challenges will come in, the flood waters will rise again, maybe, and you feel as if you're being drowned. Remember, remember, you are in covenant with God, and the God who started all this will finish, and we will end up triumphant. We will win, my friend, we will win. You remember as I close on the 31st of 2019. The Lord shared, shared with me this message and I delivered it to you. Raise up an Ebenezer in 2020. In other words, always say, and what is Ebenezer? It's a stone, a memorial stone again. In other words, the Lord wants you and I to keep on declaring, keep on remembering. Thus far, He has led us through. Thus far, He has helped us. Thus far, He has guided us through the lockdown. Thus far, He has protected us from the virus. Will He not see us through? What He has started, He will complete. 
is a good God, my friend. He's an absolutely good God. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And He will see us all through uncharted waters. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails all my days. I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Yes, Lord, I will sing of the goodness of God Father God, in Jesus' name, as we prepare ourselves in the coming days to set foot into uncharted territories, we know, Lord, you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. So help us, Lord, right now to consecrate ourselves, prepare ourselves, be still and know that you are God. And then after that, Lord, be so confident that nothing will shake us and we move over, cross over, Knowing very well, O oh God, that every time when troubles come, we remember that we are in covenant with you. Oh, Father, I want to pray right now, God. Even Psalm, even Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to verse 4, over all my people in the church today. Lord, you said so. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, no matter how flooded the rivers are, the Lord says, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. You will not drown, my friend. You will not drown. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. Hallelujah, friend. Have no fear because the Lord is with us. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.